Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Mark walked away from the store, around the corner, and up Maple Street toward Carolyn's house. It was a nice street in the town. The neighborhood had a nice feel to it because of the big old houses and overgrown trees. Mark liked to visit Carolyn at her house. He knew she used him, but he didn't mind. Just being with her was enough for him. She was most likely the most beautiful girl he had ever met. He had also grown to like spending time with her Aunt Laura. She, too, was very beautiful. Mark liked Laura ever since he met her at Oceanside Junior College on the first day of registration earlier in the year. While waiting in line, Mark had already made friends with Carolyn and found out that she was new to the area and lived with her aunt. Carolyn started the conversation by tapping Mark on the shoulder from behind. She asked, Excuse me, but do you know where the girl's bathroom is? Because she thought he was a girl. <laughs> when Mark slowly turned around, Carolyn realized her mistake. People behind them laughed. With a big smile, Carolyn said she was sorry. She was so pretty that Mark was happy to accept her apology. The conversation eventually turned to his hair, which is why she thought he was a girl. Carolyn and Mark both had long, straight hair in the same style. Carolyn found out through small talk that Mark knew a lot about how to keep his hair looking good. She thought that he even knew more about it than some of her female friends. Even though Carolyn thought the meeting was strange, she liked Mark right away. Laura met Mark when she came by to pick up Carolyn after she was done with registration. He remembered that the first thing she had ever said to him was, Hey, nice hair! Carolyn explained her aunt's remark by telling Mark that she ran a beauty shop out of her home. During their first year of college, he and Carolyn spent a lot of time together. Carolyn seemed to always need Mark for something, even if it was just to sit and talk. Carolyn always had boy problems. Mark would pay close attention to what Carolyn did in social situations. Now it was time for finals, followed by the big spring ball and then spring break. Mark, who always works hard, had already finished his finals. On the other hand, Carolyn was running around like a beautiful debutante and was more worried about getting ready for the ball than about her finals. Mark rang the doorbell next to the big, beveled glass door. The door opened after a short time. Well, hello, Mark. What brings you here? Laura asked in her usual friendly way. I just stopped by to help Carolyn today. Is she home? Not right now, but I expect her soon. So she tricked you into helping her with her housework again? Well, I'm done with finals a week early, so it's no big deal. Poor Carolyn is always so busy. They can be dangerous. Laura was still very pretty for a woman in her 40s, Mark thought as he watched her descend the stairs in her high heels. Mark put his hands on the table and leaned over to look at all the nail polish colors. Laura smiled when she saw Mark's interest. Pick one out if you'd like, she teased. Uh, no thanks, Mark said. Mark replied as he moved away from the table and turned red. Then Mark looked around at all of the portraits of women with beautiful hairstyles that caught his eye. He seemed to look at a picture of a woman with a wild mane of long, unruly red curls for a moment. Eventually, he turned his attention to a rack of dresses for evening wear on the wall. He slowly paid attention to each one. Under them, a stack of shoeboxes was on the floor. He then looked over and saw that the woman whose hair Laura was doing was smiling and watching him. He thought she looked familiar, but he couldn't put a face to her. Please forgive me, Mark. This is Kay. Kay looked at Mark. His small frame and long hair made him look even more feminine. Kay waved and cooed. Hi, Mark. Are you here to get your hair done for the ball? Laura, did you do his hair? It looks so nice and healthy. No, Mark hasn't let me touch his hair yet, but I've offered. Isn't that right, Mark? Yeah, but I only refused because I want it to be longer, Mark said, flipping his hair back over his shoulders in a girly way. Kay said to Mark, good God, how much longer do you need it? Your hair is longer than anyone else's at my shop right now. You should really think about letting Laura do something with it. These days, shorter curly styles are much more popular. Take this one, for example, Kay said teasingly, pointing to a picture of a short cut with a halo of loose, pretty curls that cascaded down the back. Mark said, but my hair isn't curly. Stupid, that's why you need Laura. She can fix that with a perm. 
Kay said, pointing to her own hair as Laura took out the last perm rod. Mark was speechless and didn't know what to say. But, of course, I'm sure you knew that. Maybe you just like your hair long so you can put it up like that one, Kay asked, pointing to a different picture of a woman with big curls pulled back and loosely pinned on top of her head to create a soft look. Stand up and let me see how long your hair is, she said. Mark thought it was an odd request, but he did what she asked and stood in front of her with his hair hanging well below his shoulders. Turn around so I can see your back, Kay said. Mark took Kay at her word and did just that. He turned so fast that he lost his balance. His long hair flew up and around in front of his face, making it look like he did a pirouette. As soon as he got his balance back, he gently pushed his hair away from his face and put it behind his shoulders. Both women laughed when they saw the weak boy messing with his hair. Kay and Laura laughed as Mark sat back down. You need to work on your spin moves, dear. You wouldn't want to do that on a dance floor, Kay said. Some waves in your hair would look good on you. You should think about it, Mark replied. Okay, I get it. I'll think about it, hoping to stop the teasing. Laura asked, really? As she smoothed the curls out of Kay's hair. Are you finally going to set up a meeting? I said I'd think about it, Mark mumbled, wanting to talk about something else. Laura smiled. She liked making fun of Mark's hair, and she thought it was funny that Kay had found the same thing. Laura stepped in because she thought Mark would benefit from a change of subject. By the way, Mark, Kay owns a dress shop called called Formalities. What kind of shop is that? Mark asked, happy to change the subject, but trying not to give away that he knew the shop. When he heard the name of the store, he thought of Kay because he had been in her store before. Kay brought over some dresses and shoes for Carolyn to try on for the starlight ball. You might be able to help her choose something. Are you also going to the ball next week? Kay asked. Well, no, not really, Mark said. What does that mean? Kay asked, puzzled. Mark, you don't have a date, do you? Oh, I'm sorry, Kay said. And now we're talking about hairstyles, fancy clothes, and other such things. Kay pretended to be sorry, saying, We didn't mean to make you feel bad. Not really a big deal. Mark answered, I don't mind living vicariously through Carolyn. Both women looked at him as if there was something hidden in his answer. Kay then recognized Mark as the young boy she had seen looking at the pretty dresses in her shop. Oh, hi, uh, Carolyn, Laura said, picking up the phone. I think there was an accident on the freeway near the mall. She is stuck at the mall until there is less traffic. She asked you to wait so you could help her choose a dress and shoes, if that's okay, Mark. She asked if you could pick out a few for her to try on, and I said, Uh, sure, I guess so. You don't have any other plans for today, do you? Kay asked with a happy wink. No, I don't, he said. That's a great thought. What do you say, Mark? There's no better time than now to pick clothes while waiting Carolyn. Can you hand me some of those magazines on the table? These are all prom magazines, Laura teased Mark, making sure to stress the word prom. <laughs> That's fine. I saw some cute clothes for both men and women. I'm sure we can find something that will work for Mark. Mark listened and watched in horror as the two women quickly flipped through the pages. For me? Mark asked. Yes, of course, silly. You are about the same size as Carolyn. We need to know the proper sizes. Mark wasn't sure, but he couldn't do much about it. The two women started comparing the options with a smile. Here we go, Laura finally said as she turned the magazine around to show Mark and Kay. Mark looked ahead and saw a picture of a young woman with shoulder-length dark auburn hair cut in a curly gypsy shag. Mm, that's going to be me, he asked. Kay answered yes and took Mark by the hand and led him to the sink. Laura joined them both and told Mark to sit down, then put a smock on him. She gently leaned him back, turned on the water, chose a shampoo that smelled good, and started washing his hair in the basin. Kay suddenly said with a smile, I'll be back later, Laura. As she reached for her purse, she added, I just remembered a few other dresses and things I probably should bring over given how things have turned out. Laura looked up, paused, and then smiled. Yes she said. Things could go in an interesting direction, she said to herself. She just now remembered that she had told Kay about Mark before. Thanks for watching. 
Check out Patreon if you want to have early access to the other parts. If not, it will be online in a couple of days.